Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Introduction to Deep Learning. Uh, my name is Johannes, I'll be one of the TAs for this semester and I'll be going through the course logistics. Let's take a brief look of the outline for this lecture. First, we'll start with the introduction, then we'll talk about who should take this course, we'll talk about the objective and the syllabus, uh, followed by the course logistics. And we'll be talking about the homework, the quizzes, and the projects you'll be doing, uh, the preps, uh, the preparations they need, the teamwork and the mentoring, and finally about the challenges. Uh, let's first start with the introduction. So deep learning has enabled machines to autonomously recognize patterns, uh, features, and intricate relationships within a vast data set. And this transformative approach has unlocked groundbreaking advancement across diverse domains. So what are neural networks in simple words? A neural network is a method in artificial intelligence that teaches computer to process data in a way that's inspired by the human brain. Neural networks have become one of the major trust areas in recent various pattern recognitions, predictions, and analysis problems. And they have established the state of the art in many problems, often exceeding the previous benchmark by a large margin. Some of the breakthroughs in real network are like in audio and speech recognition such as Siri, Alexa, Google Home, and Cortana. Now you can tell your phone to set a reminder, ask your smart speaker for the wazer, or instruct your virtual assistant to call a friend with the help of neural network. Other breakthroughs are in vision and perception. Now we can detect faces and recognize them as well. We can do object detection, semantic segmentation, pose estimation, and many other more. The picture you see on the slide is a Dectron model that is made, developed by Facebook that provides state-of-the-art detection and segmentation algorithm. Other breakthroughs include uh, Tesla's self-driving car that provides driving assistance by steering, accelerating, and braking uh, on the highways. And other breakthroughs include like music generation such as Jukebox. Uh, jukebox is a neural net that generates music as a raw audio in variety of genres and artistic styles. Uh, you can go ahead and follow the link to uh, check out what Jukebox can generate and try variety of genres with it as well. And the most recent breakthrough is DAL E2 and ChatGPT. And I believe uh, most of you have come across uh, ChatGPT, and these are two cutting uh, each AI technologies that have changed the way we interact with computers. And both of them were developed by OpenAI. DAL E can generate realistic images of uh, objects, scenes, peoples, even if they are out of ordinary. ChatGPT is, on the other hand, a large language model chatbot that can generate texts, translate languages, and write different kinds of creative contents and answer your questions in a very informative way. The neural network of ChatGPT is a transformer-based architectures, and transformer architectures are type of neural network that are uh, particularly well suited for natural language processing tasks. Uh, you'll get a better understanding of how this works later on when we cover transformers. In the slide, I have uh, imported uh, on DAL E an armature in the shape of avocados, and it was able to generate uh, these results. And this, now let's go to the who should take the course. Um, the course is designed for any students coming from any background that want to learn deep learning. Uh, students who are willing to put 12 to 20 hours a week, uh, students who are active in Piazza and mature and want to be challenged, and for students who want to be ready for AI research and engineering roles. Most efficient students follow all the lectures and read all the delivered materials carefully and plan their work and work with their study group and they expect to spend 12 hours a week. And the less time you spend absorbing the material, the more time you'll spend on the homework, so the more time it will take you to finish the homework. So please bear in mind to follow all the lectures and the reading materials. Let's talk about the objective and the syllabus. As a preparation for this course, we require you to have a fundamental understanding of Python and PyTorch. And we highly recommend you to take classes such as calculus and linear algebra. 
and vector calculus and software engineering are also nice to have. The course objective at a high level is for you to understand neural networks and comprehend the models that do previously mentioned tasks and maybe build them. And fearlessly design, build, and train networks for various tasks. The main level course objective is for you to have some historical perspective about neural networks and the type of neural networks and how they work and how neural networks learn by training about the various concepts and the practical issues you may face while training a neural network and we'll also talk about the textures and the applications and we also will cover the practical aspects as well uh, we'll make you familiar with the training and also be practically implementing various neural network architectures and implementing uh, state of the solution for some of the problems. Overall, our objective is to set you up for further research to work in your research area. So the topics we'll be covering in this course are basic net network formalisms such as multi-layer perceptron, uh, convolutional neural network, uh, recurrent neural network, uh, Boltzmann machines, and some advanced uh, topics we'll be covering are variational autoencoders. Uh, generative adversarial networks, uh, graph neural networks, and about transformers. And these topics will be touching on, on computer vision, on text processing, uh, motion translation, uh, modeling distribution, and generating data, and as well speech recognition. The reading material for the course are on the course website and we will also be adding additional reading materials that correspond to each lecture, so please make sure you check the course website regularly to keep updated. Uh, let's talk about the course logistics. The instructor for this course is Professor Biksha Raj, and we have around uh, 20 EAs uh, with their email IDs on the course page. And we have TAs from two locations, from Pittsburgh and Kigali campus. And we'll be offering uh, remote as well as in-person office hours. Uh, the time are subjected to change, but we will keep you updated about the schedule on the course website. So check that regularly. The lectures will be primarily be delivered in person. And for the remote sections, we'll be having a live streaming. Uh, the lectures will also be recorded and uploaded to the course website as well as the YouTube page. And it's very important that you view the lectures, even if you, if you think you know the topic, because we'll be uh, monitoring your class attendance. And uh, I'll talk about the class attendance later on. And some of the lectures may be entirely conducted over Zoom. So... Uh, we will uh, notify you early if the class is going to be over Zoom uh, through Piazza. So uh, our main communication channel will be Piazza. And please uh, check it regularly and uh, please be updated with the recent trends. Uh, as for the computing infrastructure, uh, you'll be using uh, AWS, uh, Google Cloud Platform or Kaggle. About lecture attendance, so you get marks for your attendance and uh, our previous semester metrics show that there is a distinct correlation between attendance and the course grade you'll be receiving at the end. So to encourage attendance, we assign one mark for attendance. That is 1% of your total grade for graduate level courses and 1.3 for undergraduate level courses. So we advise you to attend the classes as much as you can because this can make a difference in your grade. And in addition, attending the class will reduce the amount of help you require on Piazza and during office hours. So uh, as I said earlier, you must either attend the classes in person or watch the stream live video. Uh, and there are some exceptions. So we get attendance that's from your participation in the in-class polls. Polls will be primarily conducted on Piazza for in-person lectures and it's recommended to use the Piazza app available both on the Android and iOS. And lectures conducted over Zoom will use uh, the Zoom polls. 
Use of electronic devices during in-person lecture is not permitted except during polls. So you will be asked to put your devices away. Uh, students in Silicon Valley and in other time zones where your local time is before 8 a.m. or after 5 p.m. for the class may alternatively watch the recorded lectures on MediaTek. If you viewed on MediaTek, the lecture of each week must be viewed before 8 a.m. of the Monday following the following week. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't count as uh, participation. The precise mechanism for computing the class participation score uh, from attendance will be decided at the end of the semester. So our general advice uh, for you is just to attend the classes. And the lecture schedule is on the website. So any changes on the, in the schedule will be notifying you on Piazza. Also, we'll be updating the course website. The later half of the semester, we'll be having a GUS lecture. And for the recitations, we have uh, 14 recitations uh, excluding the homework bootcamps. So we'll be uh, having uh, recitations every Friday of the semester. And if the recitation is held over Zoom, we will let you know early through Piazza. And we strongly recommend you to attend these recitations because we'll be covering in detail and basic exercises that are important for your homeworks. The topics for this recitation are available on the course schedule. So and now we'll be covering what are the homeworks, the quizzes and the projects and the grading as well. So the scores are evaluated based on three types of tests. Uh, those are the weekly quizzes, the homeworks and the team projects. Uh, team projects doesn't apply for the undergrad courses, uh, 11485. The weekly quizzes, uh, we have 10 multiple choice que questions and you will have uh, be having three attempts and the uh, quizzes are related to the, the topics we covered uh, in the lectures in that week. So they will contain both the slides as well as uh, this lecture. So they are released every Friday and uh, they close at Sunday night. This may occasionally shift, so don't panic, we will let you know. And there will be 14 total quizzes, and we will consider the best 12. Uh, this is expected to account for any circumstances based on uh, inability to work on quizzes, so you can skip any two. So the weekly quizzes uh, are based on the slides and the lectures, as I said earlier. So the slides often contain a lot of information that I'm presented in class. So quizzes will contain from topics that are on the slides but not present in the class. Uh, we'll also include topics covered in class but not on online slides. So you should be you should go through both those slides and the lectures uh, for the quizzes. And the, there will be questions based on the latest research paper and the quizzes as well. So the links to the paper will be provided. For the homeworks, there will be recitation zero exercise and four interim homeworks. So the recitation exercises include uh, Python, object-oriented programming, PyTorch, uh, how to set up various computing resources. Uh, we'll talk about the data loaders, data pre-processing. And these exercises are you as a preparatory material for the course. And we highly recommend you to go through it. And you will be having four homeworks that are neural network exercises. So the homeworks are have two parts. One is the auto graded problem that has a deterministic solution, and you will upload them to the auto lab. Part two are on the other hand an open problems posted on Kaggle, and there will also be bonus homeworks. Uh, these bonus homeworks are associated with some or all part of the homework and there will be a separate autograd bonus homeworks as well. And this mark, this mark will not contribute to your final grade but give you a chance to make up for marks you missed elsewhere. Let's talk about the homeworks for part one. So part one of the homework will uh, evaluate your ability to code uh, neural nets on your own from scratch. So you'll be primarily using NumPy. And write your code. So 
if you implement all mandatory bonus uh, mandatory and bonus questions of part one of all homework so you will hopefully have all the components necessary to construct a literal neural network toolkit of your own called mytorch uh, it will be kind of similar to pytorch the homeworks are auto graded and be careful about following instructions carefully the, the auto grader is set up on a computer with specific versions of various packages and your code must conform to those restrictions if not the auto grader will often fail and give you errors or zero markers even if your code is functional on your own uh, computer so in your homeworks we will give you a version of package to install so it's kind of better to stick with those and on, in, a, in addition we have a submission before early submission deadline so if you submit early uh, you'll get an early submission bonus as well and for the part two of the homework uh, this will test your ability to solve complex problems on real world data sets uh, the early submission deadline is a requirement and there was uh, 10 points out of 100 and the remaining is uh, 90 will be determined by your final score relative to the cutoffs so we'll be having uh, five cutoffs and uh, the high cutoff will be worth 90 points a medium 70 points a low cutoff 50 points and so on so uh, your score is linearly interpolated between the cutoffs for instance if we set 85 percent accuracy model for the high cutoff and 75 percent model for the media and if your score is 80 percent accuracy you'll get 80 out of the possible 90 points and if you do your early submission deadline that means you'll be getting 90 out of the 100 points and there is another fifth cutoff for an extra credit that is worth 10 points and this is determined by the highest scoring students so if the highest accuracy achieved for the homework is 92 percent and the, the scoring students will get uh, 110 out of 100 and anyone between 85 which is the high cutoff and to 92 will get uh, a mark which is nearly nearly interpolated uh, from 100 to 110 line that is considering you have done the early submission deadline let's talk about the homework deadline so there are multiple deadlines uh, for the homeworkers uh, there is a separate deadline for homework part one and another deadline for the Kaggle component as well. The Kaggle component has three deadlines. The first one is the early submission deadline, which is worth 10 points. And this is for confirming that you have started the assignment and on time submission deadline is the final submission deadline. Uh, this uh, your submission must occur before this deadline to be eligible for full marks and their third deadline is a late or slack deadline and submission after the on time submission deadline will not will receive penalty and you can use your slack days to avoid a penalty but you're not able to get bonuses and we have and everyone gets up to 10 slack days uh, this does not apply for the initial submission or part one of the homeworks this is solely for uh, homework two and you can't distribute them as much as you want uh, across all of the homeworkers but once you use your slack this you'll be eligible for the bonus which is the high, the fifth cutoff we talked about earlier and once you use up your slack days any submissions will occur, will occur 10 percent penalty and there will not be no more submissions after the little slack deadline and the Kaggle leader the Kaggle leaderboard will stop showing updates after the on-time submission deadline but we will continue to accept your submissions until the late uh, or slack deadline using another Kaggle leaderboard for more uh, information you can go through the course website to see the complete set of policies For the course project, and if you are taking 11.785, you'll be required to do a course project. 
uh, whereas for 11.685 students, you will be assigned a field homework that is equivalent to two projects. And projects are done by a team of uh, students. Ideally, that is four. And for 11.685, uh, are ideally two percent teams. You are encouraged to form your teams early and projects uh, are intended to exercise your ability to comprehend and implement ideas beyond those covered by the homeworks. Uh, projects can range from implementing and evaluating cutting edge uh, ideas from recent papers and doing or doing research problems some might lead to publication if completed well. Uh, proposing new models, learning algorithm techniques with proper evaluation. Uh, you can go through the course website to to take a look of the previous semester students' uh, project work. Uh, think about forming project teams as soon as possible. And if you don't form your own team, uh, we will team you up with your classmates. And each team must submit a project proposal by the deadline listed on the website. Submit a midway report three fourths uh, through that semester. Uh, submit a preliminary full report three days before the presentation due date, and make five minute video presentation of the project at the end of the semester. And this video could be presented by one, some, or all team members, and will be evaluated by the instructors, these, and your classmates. Ensure you explain the problems, the proposed solutions. Uh, the results and your evaluations very clearly. Uh, allocate enough time to make the presentation. It's not easy as you think. Um, poor presentation can significantly affect your project score. And you will also be submitting a final full report at the end of the semester and you will be defending your project in front of your peers and TAs and the template for the writing the proposals as well as the reports will be posted on Piazza. And each team uh, will be assigned a mentor from among the TAs uh, who will be monitoring your progress and assist you if possible. And more details on the project evaluation will be posted towards the end of the SEM. The project is where you delve more deep and try various new ideas, uh, try out uh, uh, new papers and work on area you are interested in. So this pro the project is often the most fun portion of the course. Uh, when it comes to grading, the, we will have weekly quizzes that account for 24% of your total grade. And we'll be having 14 quizzes, but we have the option to drop uh, two uh, so each quiz would have uh, two marks and for the assignments uh, we'll be covering uh, a basic multilayer perceptron convolutional neural network a recurrent neural network sequence to sequence modeling and each mark uh, each homework will be assigned a 12.5 mark uh, for the team project uh, this is not for the undergrad. Uh, you'll be submitting a proposal, uh, a midterm report, a preliminary full report, a project presentation, and a peer reviewing and a final report. Uh, the peer reviewing is uh, where you review uh, the member of your team. So we highly recommend you to participate within your team because this may affect your grade later on. And the and finally, there is a one mark for attendance as well. Uh, let's talk about the preparations, the teamwork and the mentoring. The course is an implementation heavy, which involves a lot of coding and experimenting. And you will work with some large data sets. And the language of choice is Python. Uh, we'll be using PyTorch as a toolkit. And you are welcome to use other languages and toolkits, but the DEs will not be able to help you with your coding and homeworks but you may often get support for TensorFlow. And we hope you have gone through uh, Recitation Zero. It carries no marks, but it will help you when you're doing the homeworks later on. We will be using Piazza as a communication platform. Uh, we'll be having class polls, uh, questions and answering, announcements and reminders, uh, student collaboration, and instructor notes on uh, Piazza. If you are a new student for the fall 2023, please follow the link and sign up and register for the deep learning course. Uh, we believe learning happens best together. You will learn more 
from each other than you learn from us. So we encourage TMOX, but there are strict rules. Please form a study group. If you don't have a study group of your own, we will form one for you. Uh, please register on the form posted on Piazza. Everyone must be part of a study group. Each study group will be assigned a TA mentor for the help throughout the course. In your study groups, you may discuss the homework problems and solutions, uh, discuss papers, uh, discuss classwork, discuss quizzes, and we encourage you to meet regularly to discuss your ideal work. Uh, and study groups may also go on to form a project teams. But there are some caveats on what you may not do on your study group. Every student must solve their quizzes by themselves. Uh, you may discuss the questions with your study group's friends, but when you solve the quiz, uh, you must isolate yourself and do it alone. Every student must solve every homework by themselves. You may discuss it with your friends or debug their code, but when you finally solve it, you must write every line of code by yourself and your solution must be yours. Plagiarizing code from the web or your friends constitutes as a cheating. So please avoid it. Uh, you are here to learn deep learning yourself, not to demonstrate how well your friend or the guy in the web has learned deep learning. You are at CMU, which means you are among the best students in the world. And you are probably were among the top students in your peer group all your life. If you start cheating, it will be an insult to yourself and everything you stood for in your life. So please don't. If you are unsure whether something you are doing constitutes as cheating, please check with us. Every student will be assigned a TM mentor, and we will track your progress and reach out to you if you appear to be in trouble. If in trouble, reach out to your TM mentor or an instructor. If you feel falling behind, uh, if you are struggling, uh, if you are unable to cope up, please reach out. We'll try our best to help you. Please watch recitation 0i if you are stuck or feeling overwhelmed. We aim to make this a successful course for all of you. In our ideal world, everyone performs well enough to get an A. Without lowering our standards, we would like to bring you all up to where we believe you deserve an A. And everything about this course is geared to that objective. And let's talk about the challenges you may face during the course. This course is not easy. It will involve a lot of work. A lot of work and a lot of work. This is not for the chickens, but we'll be having a lot of fun. And know that we stand by your side and ready to assist you and support you throughout this journey. And taking a, this course for me was perso personally rewarding experience. I gained a deep understanding about the subject, applied practical techniques, as well as practical techniques that can apply in real world scenarios. And the assignments were interactive, where you work with your peers, made the whole learning process enjoyable. And all of the testers are here to evaluate you. The quizzes to test your understanding of the topics covered in the lectures, so homeworks to teach you implement complex networks and optimize them to a high degree, and projects to expose you to real-world deep learning problems. And the target is Anyone who gets an in the course is technically ready for a deep learning job. We highly recommend you to go through the video lectures for recitation zero and complete the exercises. These are essential for you to gain comfort with the coding uh, required for the homework. And homework one part one has many components intended to help you later in the course. So it may feel a bit dense. Please bear with it and worth it. And homework one is the easiest of all the homeworks. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post on Piazza for any clarification and doubts. We strive to respond to the queries within three minutes. Uh, thank you for deciding to take this journey with us and welcome.